lessons. It's all about lessons. It feels like this life is all about lessons. And today I want to share with you some of those lessons I learned while I was living in Norway. Hi, hi guys, I'm Anna, Russian-British vlogger who is currently living in Norway and today is Sunday. What do we usually do on Sunday? Right, we go hiking. And today I'm taking you hiking with me again, but it seems like today in particular this hike will be with an element of ice skating. Let's see how it goes. Seven major lessons I learned during my two years of living in this wonderful country, Norway. And I'm not talking about language lessons or cooking lessons. However, I started cooking in this country myself. Unbelievable. I'm talking about some life lessons you will definitely learn from this country if you stay here for more than three months. So let's go hiking or rather ice skating. In any case, it's gonna be lots of fun. Speaking about challenging, demanding ice skating while hiking, lesson number one, there is no such thing as a bad weather, only bad clothing. From an early age, Norwegians learned soon how to dress appropriately. Grasping the concept of layering is just as important as to learn how to count. If Norwegians don't go out when it's the bad weather, in some parts of the country they would not go out at all. Hello, Bergen. When I just came to Norway, I was thinking, how can I possibly handle such long and cold winters that lasts for months? But then smart Norwegian people explained me something really important, the art of layering your clothes. When you truly understand the art of layering your clothes properly, you will become unstoppable, no matter what sort of weather it's outside. Invest in decent set of winter clothes. That include proper, not slippery, winter shoes, like hiking shoes, and also wind and waterproof trousers and the jacket. I would also add to this list hat, neck warmer, and a pair of warm gloves. Those seem like minor details, but believe me, they're extremely important here, especially winter time. If you have in mind to chase those northern lights somewhere up north in Tromsø or in Kirkenes. Right clothing is a game changer here. When you're equipped properly, no weather condition can stop you from living your life in full. I learned this lesson, definitely taking it further with me. Second, every weather is great and even winter can be fantastic. Before I moved to Norway, I used to think that winter is too cold and autumn is too rainy. And then I visited Bergen in the middle of April. I realized that not just autumn can be rainy and snow can happen even in the middle of April. Yeah, that week in Bergen changed my life forever. Welcome to Bergen, Norway. Norway showed me that winter can be so much fun, especially if you have the right clothing. Go back and watch my point number one again. You can snowboard in the darkness. Yes, in Norway you can ski and snowboard until 9 p.m. with no problem at all. The artificial lights here are gorgeous. You can do snowshoeing, dog sledding, ice fishing, even ice skating during your hikes on Sunday. You can ride a snowmobile and chase those gorgeous northern lights if you're brave enough to go all the way up north. Even go to the beach, yes, like proper Caribbean beach. Of course you won't be able to swim. Come on, it's winter and it's still Norway, but the landscape is breathtaking. So beautiful. Perfect place for your Sunday picnic. Ok, 
Okay, let's say you prefer staying in the house. You can still go snow jogging. Yes, I know. It looks crazy, but this is my new exciting hobby I developed when I moved to Norway. And I'm still practicing it. You will miss it so much. It's not just a random jogging. It's an actual survival. It's so challenging to go jogging winter time on the snow and to try your best to go back home in one piece. Every time, like the first time, never boring. Summertime, we have endless hiking, fishing, swimming in the lake and also the days are so much longer amazing definitely there is no such a thing as a bad weather there are only some limits coming from your own head and as soon as you remove those limits your life will become a new adventure every single day all year round number three when you work work number three when you work work Wow, this one is also one of my most favorites. Lots of my friends and colleagues ask me why Norwegians leaving the office so early, like at 3 p.m. and by 4 p.m. they're already gone. Are they crazy? Well, a bit, like all of us. Yes, they leave the office quite early, but don't forget they're coming to that office quite early as well, at 7.38 a.m. At 7.40 you're already chatting with your Norwegian, colleagues nearby that coffee machine in the office and the real magic happens starting from 8 a.m. Starting from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Norwegians tend to switch off their personal phone and concentrate only on their work. No texting with their friends, no scrolling Instagram feed, no browsing the internet for personal reasons. No, work and only work from 8 to 4. That's why they leave the office much earlier than the rest of Europe. But most importantly, that's how they make their tasks complete on time with no stress. Yes, they're not just hard workers, they're also really good planners. They know exactly how to value their time and spend a lot of it with their families after work. When I finally learned this Norwegian lesson, my life became much more easier instantly. Thank you so much, my Norwegian friends and colleagues. Lesson number four, recycling. It's about five beans in every single house. Let's count them together. Two bins in the kitchen, this one for food waste and this one for plastic waste which was in contact with food. So two in the kitchen. And three more in the house. This one for glass and metal, separately for paper. And this big one for plastic rubbish, which was not in direct contact with food. Plastic, which is clean. Yes, five rubbish bags in the house. I learned this lesson from Norway. Now I know exactly how to recycle my waste. And here is the thing. The recycling process in Norway is state of the art. The country has the most efficient recycling plants in the world. And this interesting recycling system that the local was taught since their childhood. Up to 92% of the bottles recycled hold. Such high quality material that can be reused again in drink bottles. Sometimes more than 50 times. This is an an incredible achievement considering that 91% of produced plastic bottles worldwide are not recycled and 8 million metric tons of binned up in the sea every year. For example, in the UK the recycling rate of plastic bottles is about 20-25% and in the US it's about 30% compared to Norwegian 92%. Without a tiny financial motivation consumers and the companies have no motivation to do the right things for the environment, which is why Norway has given recycling value. So how does this scheme work? Norway's model is formed on a loan scheme, where the plastic bottle consumers purchase does not belong to them. They are only borrowing it. When a consumer buys a bottle here in Norway, they are charged a small fee of 13 to 30 US dollars, depending on the size of that bottle. Lesson number five my life without alcohol. It can be so exciting even without that every Friday we are going to the pub thing. Guys, I've heard it so many times. The pint in Norway is so expensive. I might be wrong, so please forgive me if it's my mistake, but I personally think that you're not coming to Norway for a pint. Norway has this gorgeous nature and breathtaking landscape. Those gorgeous fjords, 
endless forests, beautiful crystal clear lakes and adorable fisherman villages. Northern lights winter time at the end of the day. While you are in Norway, do as Norwegians do. Just fill in your flask with a filter coffee, take a few quick lunch chocolates with you and go and explore and enjoy the nature. For that pint, go to the UK. It's gonna be much cheaper and also it's within their culture. I can also tell you my personal story when I just came to Norway in 2020 and I saw the alcohol prices here. I was shocked. I could get the same bottle of the same French wine for seven pounds in London in Max and Spencer and here it was 30 pounds. I was like, what the hell? But then I developed my crazy hobby to go for a long run every Saturday morning. Doesn't matter what time of the year it is, summer or winter, I still go jogging every second day. But when it's Saturday morning, no one is disturbing me, so I can invest one or two hours in this little hobby. It really helps me keep my heart cool and clear. And one day I realized that I have to choose between that Friday wine and Saturday run. The second option won. And in a few months time I realized how great and actually relaxing can be those Fridays with no booze. Let's see if I change this habit when I leave Norway. I will keep you posted. Not to miss it out, consider subscribing to this channel and let me share with you my travels and life in different countries. But anyway, lesson learned, your life can be fantastic without that regular Friday's glass of wine. Thank you, Norway. And thank you, Vin Monopolet, with your amazing prices. Lesson number six. You don't need to have lots of things in your life, like clothes and shoes, to be happy. That sounds like a confession to make. I remember when I was living in London to buy a new pair of shoes or some new clothes used to make me believe that it helps me release that stress I'm getting from work and also would make me happy. I always knew that that feeling was too short it never lasted for too long. Like almost the next day, I had another desire to buy something else to release new stress, which in fact keeps coming every single day, no matter where you are. In no way I realized following things. First, that shopping doesn't have to do anything with your stress release. If you feel like you are getting stressed, get out and get some fresh air. More stress, longer hours outdoors. This is really helps. Second, when you travel frequently and also changing one country to another every two years, it's a good idea to reduce your wardrobe to minimum, not to drag a million suitcases with you every single time. In no way I learned that your stuff doesn't need to be fancy. It needs to be practical and ideally comfortable. A few pairs of comfortable shoes that you actually wear and not just store them in your wardrobe for years without touching them. A few pairs of quality jeans and jumpers. The same principle, you have them, you wear them. If you don't touch some of your clothes or shoes for one or more years, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Sell them or give them to charity to people who actually need them. What's the point to keep that stuff on your shelves? Following that previous point, lesson number seven, you don't really need much in this life to be happy. Your health is the key and the main reason to be happy. Waking up in the morning without coughing, without feeling any pain, being able to breathe flawlessly, feeling taste and smells of this life, having fresh air outside of your window, having the truth above your head, being blessed with that clean drinking water you have. That's a real happiness. The rest are just additional perks to your already happy life. Your life is not all about money, promotion, emotions, career development, professional achievements. It's about being healthy, being happy, being in harmony with yourself and with your family. What do you think, guys? What is happiness for you? What makes you happy in this life? Please leave me a comment in the comment box down below. On this positive note, stay safe, guys. Really, stay safe, guys. Be happy. And don't forget that you are unique and your health is priceless and is the most important thing you have in life. And as our tradition goes, I will see you next week. Love you lots, guys. Stay safe. See you next week. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.